Hey art nerds, today I want to show you how to create a beautiful poison dart tree frog illustration using Posca markers and Strathmore's black mixed media paper. This was originally a workshop for a power hour live stream. You guys can find the full workshop if you so desire in the description below. The materials you need are an assortment of Poscas, although I mostly use the main set of Posca and I'll link those in the description. I used colored leads, but you could use graphite and I used Strathmore's black mixed media paper and I was using the 9 by 12 pad which I cut down to a more manageable size. So I'm starting by lightly sketching the frog that I want to draw onto my black paper using the non-photo blue color Eno pencil. And I'm using colored lead partially so that it shows up better on stream but also so that it shows up better for my own eyes. If you have good eyesight and you're not trying to record this, you can use graphite and it may be less noticeable. Now, you don't have to use the color Eno lead like I just said. You can use graphite, but as you can see, I am erasing it. You can use any color pencils you wish if you so desire. Color pencil on black paper looks amazing, but just keep in mind that you may not be able to erase your art as you go. And if you're drawing a subject matter that you're not so familiar with or if you need to use constructive drawing to do so, you may want to use something that's erasable. So I've done a lot of Posca art on the channel and I've just done a lot of Posca art over the years and the main set of Poscas that I'm using are the original set of Poscas I bought five years ago. I knew they were kind of going dead. I knew they were kind of running out but I thought I could get one last hurrah out of them. Now I point this out because I have a lot of marker fail problems in, during this video that newer markers that aren't dying wouldn't cause those same kinds of problems. So I know it's not necessarily the best representation of Posca markers and that's why I want to point it out. As they get older, as they get used up, they're going to be prone to leaking and dripping and dribbling. And there are some solutions for this, but you may want to have a backup pandy. Now, since I shared this live stream while we were all quarantining from COVID, it's not like I could just go out to Jerry's and buy some new Posca markers. I had to kind of make do with what I had. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm filling in all the bright blue on the frog using a highlight color. So with Poscas, kind of like with a you can layer them a whole lot and what's nice about using this particular paper is it doesn't get torn up from using Posca, Posca markers unlike the Stonehenge black aqua watercolor paper which does get chewed up with Poscas. This one has a much smoother surface so it handles Posca marker quite 
a bit better than the watercolor paper. But you can layer your Posca markers once they've dried. You can blend them wet into wet if you so desire. I'm kind of avoiding any blending techniques for this one because I just wanted a kind of straightforward application that wouldn't take too long to accomplish. So you can see I have a sheet of the same paper. paper. It's a scrap from when I cut this down to size. And I've used this to swatch my colors to help me more accurately select colors that I wanted to use. And here is where I start making one of my big blunders. I should have opted not to color the leaf in the background. Now, the reference image, which I didn't include surprisingly enough, but it is in the original stream. The reference image has this brilliant green leaf that our frog is sitting on. And I thought it would be nice to like include that leaf. So we have this really nice pop of color and then we have the black background. So I'm using the fluorescent yellow Posca to do a fill. And the thing is, Posca comes in various sizes. You have very fine points, you have medium points, you have larger points, and then you have the big chisel tips. I don't actually own any of the big ch chisel tips, but those could be quite effective at a time like now for filling in a large area. So the mistake I make a little bit later on is I wanna color this leaf green and you'll see why that's a problem in a minute. So when my first layer of blue Posca dried, it's kind of streaky, it's kind of patchy, but I know that's going to happen. So I'm prepared to apply a second layer of Posca so we get that nice clean ground cover, that nice clean fill of color. You can kind of see with the yellow fluorescent Posca what I mean by like streaky and patchy. And when I was working on the Gundam themed mortar for my brother's graduation cap, and I have several videos on that topic as well, um, this was an issue that, you know, came up time and time again and was solved time and time again. So it's not necessarily a flaw it's something i'm expecting when i'm working with posca markers now if your posca is starting to die and it tends to just dribble out and leave puddles of paint on the paper you can just leave those puddles of paint if you really want to i highly recommend you use a paper towel and you just lightly dab it in the way you would to pick up excess watercolor um, that's going to kind of control how much paint actually ends up on your paper it's going to result in shorter dry times and it's also going to lead to less cracking as it dries. And I'm applying a second layer with the fluorescent yellow as well. So once the first layer of blue dried, I'm going in with a slightly darker pastel blue from a different Posca set, and I'm using this to start applying some of the shadows. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, you can layer Posca markers. So if you wish, I would recommend starting at a mid-tone, and that way you can layer your shadows and then layer your highlights on top of that. But you, it really allows for a lot of flexibility. You can work in whatever um, color application you're more comfortable in and you can work back and forth adjusting the color.
So here's where the problems really start. This green Posca marker is one, too small to cover such a large area, two, running dry and it just doesn't have enough paint to do the job. And three, my application, I was trying to mimic the striations I saw in the leaf as the leaf was turning in space, which is why I was applying the color the way I was applying it. However, with the first two problems, it makes for a really patchy, bad application. So in the future, what I might do is maybe I wouldn't try to cover such a large area with such a small Posca marker. So my solution to that problem was to use a teal, which is close to that green, but not quite. Now I was just gonna try and blend the two together. And this teal is a much newer marker. It was purchased open stock from Jerry's Artorama in the past couple years, and it hasn't seen nearly as much use as the green. So it's definitely got more paint in it. Now, during the live stream, one of the chatters pointed out that there are methods you can use to refill Posca markers. I'm not going to endorse any methods other than if Posca were to make refills for these markers, which to my knowledge, they do not. I would not use liquid acrylic in Posca markers because to the best of my knowledge, these are not acrylic, they're tempera paint. Now they are expensive markers and you probably do want to get the most use out of them possible. So if you want to look up how to refill Posca markers, feel free to do so. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just saying, even though my markers are running dry and I know other artists have touched on the topic of refilling them, I don't think that's such a good fit for me. I like predictability in my art supplies, even when I'm trying to get chaos because I like being able to count on my art supplies to do what I want them to do. So I'm personally just more comfortable buying a new set of Posca markers since mine have run out. So I finished applying the teal on the leaf and now I'm going back into our froggy friend with a darker blue to continue to add some shadows. And I haven't done anything with the black just yet. I'm only focusing on the blue for right now.
while I wait for the blue to dry, I'm going back in with the teal and I'm applying another layer to better blend our blue and our green together. So originally I'd left a black shadow underneath the frog. I've gone ahead and I filled that in with a dark blue and I'm using that same dark blue to add some shadows onto the leaf. And I also want to point out those of you who joined me for the stream or those of you who are going to watch the full stream, I started getting really down on this particular piece. And it wasn't that I thought I was a bad artist and it wasn't that I thought I wasn't capable of better. In fact, that's entirely why I was getting so frustrated with this, is that I've used Pasca markers pretty extensively. Um, I have a lot of experience with them. I know what I can get out of my markers and the leaf and how the leaf was handling and all the blobbing and all the leaking were very frustrating issues that I kind of let get to me if I'm gonna be real here. I tried not to get too down on myself because I know um, artists who are maybe less experienced, haven't been making art as long, when they see someone who's more experienced start to rag on themselves, that is intensely discouraging. And I don't want to do that to you guys because I don't like feeling that way myself. So for the black, I wanted to capture some of the highlight on the black. We have this kind of sheen since the frog's skin is covered in a thin layer of mucus. It's got this really beautiful kind of candy coat sheen to it. And I know mucus and candy coat are two words that do not go together. And to kind of capture the translucency of that sheen, I put a little bit of a darker gray kind of on the edges of where the highlight's going to be. And then I'm going to blend, not blend, but I'm going to kind of merge that using some black Posca. because I can't leave well enough alone, I decided to go back in with that fluorescent yellow and try to blend out or try to hide, try to work out some of the patchiness that we have going on in the leaf and just kind of lean into like the striations and lean into kind of the rave effect we've got going on with the frog. And this is about when YouTube live stream and OBS decided it was time for me to end the stream, whether I was done or not. So I decided to keep recording using my secondary recording device, my phone, so I could capture the rest of this process since we still have a little bit more that I wanna cover. Finally, I'm using a white Posca to add those white, shine, super shiny highlights in on the frog's skin. And whenever it's time to start adding the highlights, that's when pieces really start to come together to me. It's when they start to feel alive. And maybe when I add just a little bit of extra outlining just to kind of pull it together, but that's when it really starts to pull together for me. Now, even though I had some bad experiences with Posca, this time, I really enjoy using Posca markers. I enjoy the ease of use and I love how clean they are. For me, they're a gouache alternative and gouache for me tends to become this whole labor, labor intensive affair and 
Posca can give me the effect I want without it being a whole lot of effort. And I also really like how versatile they are. I've used Posca on pumpkins. I've used Posca on wooden plaques. I use Posca on wooden charms. I've used Posca on plastic. I've used Posca on paper. So for me, they're a very flexible medium that gives me a lot of options and they really spark my creativity. And even though I struggled with this frog piece, I still really enjoy Posca markers. In fact, I just ordered the 36 color set in the fine, which are the markers that were basically dying on me at the end of the video, because I want to take on poison dart frogs again. I want to tackle this and I want to do a better job and I want some retribution. I definitely want to do a better job on that leaf. So I hope this video inspired you. I hope you're going to give Posca markers a try. You can find links for everything down in the description below and I hope I'll see you guys again really soon with another art tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful day guys.